the light. The theme for this month is spiritual wisdom and how to follow it. And today's topic is you, an expression of the divine. You, an expression of the divine. According to the thesaurus, an expression is a representation, a declaration, a demonstration, an aspect, a reflection or style or manifestation of something. You are an expression of the divine, a representation of the divine, a declaration of spirit, a demonstration of the creativity of the universe. You are an aspect and a reflection and a manifestation of that creative principle in the universe that goes by a thousand names. You are an expression of the divine. You are the face of God, and I am here this morning to remind you of your magnificence. Got it? Got it. Okay. Let's see. I better get this here. Um, Alice Walker, in The Color Purple, said, I am an expression of the divine, just like a peach is, just like a fish is. I have a right to be this way. I can't apologize for that, nor can I change it, nor do I want to. We will never have to be other than who we are in order to, to be successful. We realize that we are, as ourselves, unlimited and, and, our, whoops, and our experiences valid. It is for the rest of the world to recognize this if they choose. And Eric Butterworth, a New Thought writer, had this to say, ye are the light of the world. Isn't that a wonderful thought? The light of the world is the very spirit of truth. You are the very activity of God in expression. So there's no place where the light of God is any more present than where you are. And there is no one who... And there is no one who is any more privileged to radiate that light than you are. You are an expression of the divine. So a kindergarten teacher was observing her students. Um, they were doing some artwork, and she was walking around and looking at, at what they were doing. And she walked up to one little girl named Susie and said, well, Susie, what is it you're drawing? And Susie said, I'm drawing God. And the teacher said, but, you know, we don't really know what God looks like. And without missing a beat, Susie says, you will in a minute. <laughs> so what does God look like to you? Do you want to see the face of God? Do, we, do you want to see the face of God? Now, I have brought a likeness of the divine with me today. And I'm going to share it with you. And it's in a round frame and it has a handle on it. Um, and I'm going to pass it around and I would invite each of you to look deeply at this picture, this face of the divine. So I'm going to start it over here and hopefully it will... Um, get through the entire, the, everybody, as I talk. And for those of you who are not looking at that picture, I invite you to look around. Look at whoever is next to you. Look at their face. This is the face of God. And as you do that, let's listen to Karen. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God Sounds like you want to sing, sing we We are the face of God We hold you in our hearts you are a part of us We are the face of God You are the face of God You are 
are the face of God. Why hold you in my heart? I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me, part of me. You are the face of God. That is your truth. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, said, you exist that divine feeling, fire, imagination, and creativity may be expressed through you. You exist that divine feeling and fire and imagination and creativity may be expressed through you. So how will you share this divine feeling and this divine fire? This, this creativity and this imagination. How will you share it? How will you share your magnificence? Now, you can share your magnificence by being the very best you that you can be. You don't need to be anybody else. Just you. Because spirit expresses through you. And by allowing yourself to remember that you're an expression of God, that makes all the difference in the world. Because when we remember, then we are able to let that goodness, that love, that joy, that essence of wonder move through us and express to others so that we are a beneficial presence in the world. Now, this may not be true for you, but... What I've noticed about myself is that I'm much, it's much easier for me to be the best me that I can be if I watch what I take into my consciousness, if I watch what I take into my mind and what I think about. Now, what comes to mind for me with that is the news. You know, I do better if I don't watch too much news. I want to know what's going on in the world. But what I've noticed is that since... A lot of the news, not all of it, but a lot of the news is negative. If I get in, into it too much, then I tend to go into that negative place as well. Now, there is some really good, interesting news around, though. I didn't get a chance to check news this morning, but Mary did, and she shared this with me, um, that there, they have found that mongooses, would that be mongoose? Mongooses, I think it's... I don't know. Mongooses, when they give birth, the whole, would it be a tribe? Uh, I, the whole group, they all give birth on the same day. Wow. Yeah, they do this underground, and, um, and so who, who knows whose kids are whose, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then... The mongooses, the babies, are, are cared for primarily by um, an adult, a responsible adult male. So, now, see, so there's some good stuff that you can learn on the news. I mean, who knew that about mongooses at all? I certainly didn't. Um, but, but, you know, when I, when I keep the things that come into my mind positive, it's certainly much easier for me to, to be the best me that I can be. So how can you be the best you you can be? Well, you can start each day with focusing on what you want. Not what you don't want, not what you don't have, but focusing on what you want. Starting um, each day with, um, with just a, a gratitude for what you have. Now, like, do you want to spend the day tired or energetic? Well, I think I know that for most of us, the answer is probably ener energetic. And starting the day with gratitude for the energy that flows through us, for the energy that we already have, for the energy that moves our blood around in our body, that's going to get you a lot further than complaining about being tired. I know that for sure. And starting your day looking for, the, looking for and at the beauty that surrounds you and remembering that it's within you, that will help to bring more of that into your day. More beauty, more love, more joy. So try starting your day imagining 
the magnificence of spirit flowing through you. Let's do that right now. So take a breath. Maybe if you want, glance up here at the, uh, at the uh, consciousness candles that remind you that there is that spark of the divine within you. Feel that. Imagine it moving through you as love, as joy, as abundance, as all of those things that you want to experience in life. If you did that, if you allowed that on a regular basis, what would that be like for you? What would it feel like? What would your conversations be like if spirit was speaking in through and as you? What would it be like to listen with the ears of God and look through God glasses? Giving ourselves a chance to just um, think about that, to concentrate on it, to invite that in at the beginning of the day is absolute magic. And another thing, in the morning, and you can open your eyes now, um, or not, um, <laughs> in the morning, it's an amazing uh, practice to imagine yourself that night giving thanks for what a wonderful day you've had. Okay, so here you are in the morning, and I'm giving thanks that this has been a wonderful day because I'm imagining it at night. And it's so amazing because you can give thanks in advance. You can give thanks in advance that, that all of your communications went smoothly. You can give thanks in advance. Imagine yourself giving thanks at night for all of your chores and, and tasks, even the ones that you don't really like being done with ease and grace. These are things that we can do with our powerful, powerful minds because we are sourced by that universal source, by that universal power that always, always, always um, is for us. With angels and helpers and guides around us, all of the forms of the divine, just imagine that and you will feel that power. When we, when we think about it and when we actually feel its presence, it becomes real to us and we get to use it. And that is a good, good thing. And of course, starting your day with prayer and whatever form of meditation or connecting to the divine um, works for you will connect you with that abundance. It will connect you with the wisdom, with the guidance, with whatever it is you need, with the support, with the reminders of who you are. Trust me, how you start your day will make a difference in how your day unfolds. It will make a difference in how much you have to be gra grateful for at the end of the day. And it will even make a difference in how well you sleep. Definitely. Starting your day in that way makes a huge difference. Oh, and how about the difference that it might make in our lives if we remembered that not only are you an expression of the divine, but so are the people around you, every single one of them. You know, that grouchy spouse or neighbor or coworker. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I do not have a grouchy spouse. She is the sweetest thing ever. <laughs> but I've heard that some people do. <laughs> Sometimes she does. <laughs> all of those people, all of those people are, are the face of God as well. They are expressions of God also. Now, maybe they've forgotten who they are. Maybe they never learned that they were this divine essence in a, in a human body, in a magic suit. But all of us have that as our truth that we can call on, that we can live from, that we can allow to live through us. 
And then, of course, we can think about the joy that we see and the smiles that we see and the magic that we hear when people are playing music or playing or doing things that they love. And then you can clearly, clearly see that that is God moving through. That is spirit having a good time. And that's what we are here to allow. So look around during the day and remember that all that you see is Godness in expression. All that you see and sense and interact with is divine at its core. That's where you can connect. That's where you can appreciate. That's where you can remember that there's only God. It's what you are. It's what everyone else is. You are an expression of the divine. Ernest Holmes said, every one of us personally has back of us the potential of the universe. There is an irresistible potential pressing against everyone for self-expression. If we listen, we shall hear it not as a voice, but as a feeling, as a divine urge to express. If we believe in it, it shall manifest through us. And if we keep our consciousness active and alive to it, the volume that flows through us by our consent will necessarily increase. But we have to believe it will. You are an intentional creation of life. So imagine um, a, a God thing, a source, a creator that wants to experience everything, everything. Wants to experience the good, the bad, the ugly. It wants to experience the beautiful, the joyful, and even the painful. Because that is the kind of universe we live in. We get to, we get to experience whatever it is that we choose. But there's still that divinity that is choosing it. It's all God. But we get to choose the parts that we want to um, embody. We get to choose the parts that we want to live. We get to choose the parts that we want to show up as. I mean, what if you're here as a God experiment so, so that the spirit can experience what it feels to choose and create from your viewpoint? As creators, we each create differently. We create with our thoughts and our beliefs. But no two people create the same, just exactly the same lives. There has never been anyone like you ever, and there never will be, ever. What if beyond any challenges that your life, your, your soul is just here taking in the lessons and gathering up the love. And, and at the end of life, and this is what I believe, at the end of our physical life, I think we get to keep all of the love, all of the lessons, all of the joy, and the rest of the stuff falls away. The pain, the disappointment, we are here to be love gatherers. Now, a lot has been written by hospice workers and other people who companion the dying. And, um, and it's kind of interesting to, to look at what they have said about um, regrets, about the regrets that people have at the end of their life. You know, um, people at the end of their lives don't wish that they'd had more sex or more bungee jumps or, you know, more, um, more, played more computer games. They don't wish that they'd owned more stuff or worked more overtime or had more um, cosmetic surgery. That's not what people at the end of their life think about. The main regret that people have is, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. 
I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life that other people expected of me. Number one, regret. Others are, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. I wish I'd let myself be happier. Now, when we remember that we are expressions of the divine, it gives us the courage. It gives us the courage to live lives that are congruent with who we really are. It gives us the courage to express our feelings. It gives us the courage that we need to be all that we can be, to be a beneficial presence in the world. It reminds us that happiness is a choice. When we remember that we are expressions of the divine and that we are in control of our lives here, folks, we're not in control of everything that happens on the outside of us, but we are in control of our reactions, our responses, and that makes all the difference to the quality of our lives. But we have to say yes to that. We have to say yes to living from that truth, expressing our feelings, and choosing happiness. We have to say yes to showing up as the magnificent and unique expressions of the divine that we are. So are you up for showing up like that? Yeah. Yeah. Here's an affirmation. Right here and right now, I say yes to living as the magnificent and unique expression of the divine that I came here to be. Let's say that together. Right Right here here and right right now, I say yes to living as the magnificent and unique expression of the divine that I came here to be. Once more. Right here and right now, I say yes to living as the magnificent and unique expression of God that I came here to be. So as we remember our magnificence, and as practitioners stand with me in high consciousness, let's take this into prayer. Oh, my God. Oh, my source. Oh, love of the universe. I am so grateful for the amazingly unique and magnificent forms that you show up in. I am so grateful for the faces of God that are before me here today. So grateful that we have this teaching that teaches us that we are at choice. That as we remember our divinity, as we remember our magnificence, that is what expresses in through and as us. What I absolutely claim is that as we go through this week, that we do remember. We are given sweet and delightful reminders from the universe of who we are our essence, our truth of divinity. And so what I know is that as each one here remembers that going forward, that this is just an amazing week where any challenges are are met with exactly what is needed to face them. Where anything that we need support on, we feel that support. We feel the angels and helpers and guides and all of the other forms of the divine around us and for us. We surrender, turning it over, turning over our challenges, listening for the guidance, oh, and following it. And so I declare that each one here goes away blessed with this, having it working in their lives, reminding them of their magnificent expression of the divine. I let this go, knowing that it's done, knowing that it is the truth, 
and invite you to say with me, and so it is. I'm here to remind you of your